I'm gonna show you how to fix underexposed photos in Lightroom right now. So there's a lot of different ways that you can fix underexposed photos. I'm going to show you the most efficient ones and the ways that I use most often. Now you may get a picture like this where in camera you thought it looked pretty good but when you get it in Lightroom you realize gosh I lost a lot of the detail. So this is a picture of my daughter I took in Rhode Island. You can tell that her skin is a little underexposed, her sweater and hair are a little underexposed. So you might start with just the exposure slider and that could work except it might be working well on her skin but it sort of over brightened the background area. And I'm gonna take that back because I want you to look at the histogram up here. This is where all the information on our camera lies from the blacks to the whites, right? So if I lift the exposure, it's lifting everything to the right. And that's why the background is becoming too bright. So instead, let's start out by lifting the shadows. Now watch her sweater and watch her skin and her hair. And that's looking pretty good. And you notice that the background didn't get too bright. Now I'm gonna undo that because I want you to watch the histogram this time, okay? So watch the histogram. This time when I'm bringing it up, only the left side of the histogram is moving, which is keeping our highlights and our whites pretty much in place. Now I can bring the highlights down a little if I want to recover a little bit of the detail and those clouds. I don't need to do it too much. And I'm, I'm looking at it now and I'm thinking it may be a little too hazy, like I've lost a little bit of the contrast in her sweater, maybe even in her, her hair a little bit. I don't want to affect her skin as much, so I can just easily bring down the blacks. Now watch her sweater, especially when I do this, okay? And I'll take it back and forth so you can kind of see, right? Now I've created more contrast or brought the contrast back into her sweater and her hair. And contrast, remember, is the difference between the darkest parts of your photo and the lightest parts. So you're trying to get as much dynamic range or spread in the information that's in your histogram. Now, it's showing that I'm clipping the blacks, which means it's making them too black, but really it's probably only affecting a small speck, so I'm not worried about it. But if we look at the before and after, I'm gonna hit the backslash key on my keyboard, but this is before and this is after. Look how much more vibrant and uh, bright her skin looks. It looks more natural in terms of the, the, the light tones, okay? Here's another photo I took in Switzerland. This was on Lake Geneva. It was about mid-morning. It was already pretty bright, and I obviously was exposing for the mountains and the sky so that I wouldn't wash out the clouds in the sky, but because of that, it underexposed my, my foreground. So I, again, could try to just lift the exposure slider and watch what happens. Okay, it, it brightens up the mountains, it brightens up a little of this area, but it didn't really do a great job. Now, we'll go back and do what we did on the last photo. I'll lift the shadows first. I'm gonna lift them all the way up, and you can see it doesn't quite get what we need to. But now that I've lifted them, I can come up to my exposure slider and I don't have to go as far. So I'm just gonna go a little bit more and look at that. Now that's looking a lot better. This is the before so far and this is the after, okay? A whole lot better. Now, there's another way to bring up your exposure and that's to reduce the contrast, okay? So watch especially on the pavement down here when I reduce the contrast, it's gonna get brighter, okay? You can see how I'm brightening up that area. Now, it may have made everything else look a little too hazy and I could use the dehaze tool, but oftentimes I'll just, since I'm up here already, I'll use the blacks and bring those down just a little to see and so I'm bringing back some of the contrast there, you can see. Now I could also bring the highlights down if I wanna recover some of the highlights in the sky and the clouds, maybe bring the exposure up just a little bit more. And this is the before and this is the after. That's a huge difference. And we really only touched just a handful of sliders. Now let's introduce a couple of more tools that you can use. So this is a photo we took on the beach in Florida as a friend of ours from Germany. My daughter was standing off camera here with her iPhone just with her flashlight. So that was the only light that was shining on him. And what we were trying to do and what we've done here already is to capture 
the rich color in the sky. Now I want to keep that. I don't want to wash that out. So I could, again, bring up the shadows, but it's kind of, it, it's kind of washing him out a little. It's not really what I want. So maybe I'll, I'll come to the exposure. Now this is washing, this is reducing the richness in the sky. So I might mess around with the shadows a little bit, okay? And I might bring the exposure up slightly, maybe even bring the whites just to pop. I don't wanna to lose too much, again, in that color and the richness here. So what do I do? Well, there's a couple of things you can do. Number one, come into what Lightroom now calls the masking tool. They used to have, call it the gradient tool. They had separate tools and they still have them here. They have the linear gradient where you can create a straight line gradient. They have the radial gradient, which is what we're going to use to start out. And then I'll show you another way, but let's use this radial gradient so that we can choose just one part of our photo. Okay. And in this case, I'm going to click and drag and just create a shape that's similar to my subject and I kind of move it down over my subject and I might bring it in just so it's only affecting the areas right around him. And you can see when you hover over this, it'll show you kind of where it's going to affect and I don't wanna to get too much above his head. So I'm gonna reduce that. I'm not so worried about his feet as much as I am his face because that's where most people are gonna look. Okay, so now that I've got this radial gradient, now I can come over here to the light panel and I can bring up the shadows to get that detail back in his shirt a little bit. I might bring the exposure up to brighten up everything, especially his, his face, his skin. And if I feel like this is, you know, kind of messing around too much uh, with his shirt, I could always bring the blacks down, right? And it's still keeping that light on his face and I can maybe bring the whites up just a little bit, especially in some of the areas around his skin and his shirt kind of makes it pop. So if I click on this eyeball up here, this is going to hide the mask that we've created. So I'll click on it and you can see he's darker here. He pops here, right? But you can also see, look between his legs. Okay. When I turn this on and off, it's also affecting the sand and the water behind him. So it doesn't quite look as natural. That's why I wanna show you another tool. I'm gonna to delete this mask. And Lightroom has now given us something called the subject, okay? Very simple. And it's pretty darn smart, especially when you've got a well-defined subject in the photo. So if I click subject, watch what happens. Our friend is now masked. Look at that when I hover over. I mean, it might not be getting exactly, but it's pretty darn close. Probably better than what I was getting from the radial gradient. So now it'll stay red until I start messing around with the sliders. But now I can start playing around with that. So maybe I'll start with exposure first, okay? And it's only affecting him. Look, look at the difference here when I go back and forth. Look how much more he pops. This is what we want. This looks kind of like a model shoot, which was what he was going for <laughs> when, when we were talking about how we were gonna do this. I might bring this up again, kind of like I did before, bring the blacks back down just to create a little bit of contrast. And again, if I hold this eyeball, and I'm not taking a lot of time right now, but look what difference. And what have we done? We've kept the richness and the color in the sky. So. There's another set of tools that you can use to fix an underexposed photo in Lightroom. Last one I wanna show you. We're gonna use some of the tools we've already used. So this is uh, gonna hit E on my keyboard to get back to the edit panel. Now you can tell on my histogram, got a lot of information in the blacks, got some information in the whites. Obviously the windows are way, way overexposed, but the rest is way underexposed. So we can start with our shadows, but before I do that, I wanna show you what I've done. I've created an S curve in both the tone section and in each of the color sections for a very specific purpose so that I can create kind of um, uh, a more contrasty look and, and kind of be able to play around with the colors more. It's not something I'm gonna talk about in this video, but just understand that I have created way more contrast in this photo by doing that because of what I want to do with it. So when you've done that, now I can bring up the shadows like we've done 
and look, I mean, just using that, because if I didn't use the shadows, if I used exposure, I'm washing out the windows way too much. I'm not gonna be able to recover those highlights, right? So let's start with the shadows like we have done. Bring those pretty much all the way up, okay? And before I do anything else, watch the windows, okay? I'm going to bring down the highlights and look what you see. Holy cow, there's actually mountains outside those windows. I'm gonna double click on that to bring it back. Look at the difference. Look at the difference. When you create proper contrast before you start messing around with these sliders, you can really get granular with your edits, okay? And now I might bring back some of the whites a little bit just on the look at the walls when I do that, kind of makes them pop a little bit more. I'm not even messing around with color. Um, and and I, I have to show you though, I have warmed it up and this is something I, I kind of should have fixed before I did this, but this is how the image started. Now I've already fixed a little bit of the light. I'm not gonna go into detail with it because I'm gonna show you what it looks like afterwards. But one other tool to use when it comes to fixing an underexposed photo is this is too cool, right? Too cool of a color. So come into the color section, into the white balance and raise the temperature to be warmer. Whoops, let me click that again. Raise that to be warmer. Look at the detail we're bringing back. Je look at the wall specifically, okay? Look at the detail and the richness that we're bringing back. And that's another way that you can fix an underexposed photo is working with the temperature. Now I could do a lot more to this photo. I'm gonna show you what it looks like when I finished. And I could still kind of mess around with this, but this is sort of what it looks like in the end. I'm gonna bring some of the blues down and things like that. But look at the difference just from where we've come in this photo, way underexposed uh, in the room, way overexposed in the windows, and that's it. So this is how you can fix an underexposed photo in Lightroom, several different ways. I hope this was helpful. If it was, uh, please like the video. Please subscribe because there's lots more content like this. And until next time, happy editing. See ya.